Without further ado, let's get into stability part two, picking up right where we left off. The level of math in this one's gonna be right about the same as the one you saw before. Um, simplified, a lot of algebra. Uh, but there was a request to see what some of the more detailed math might look like, what the, the more legitimate engineering uh, equations would really be like. And so I'm gonna try and include that at the end after the summary. So let's just, we'll do the, the sort of crash course approach and we'll summarize and then um, hopefully I'll tack on then after that um, some more details. Well, let's remind ourselves what we're trying to achieve here. We want stability. And what that means is when the aircraft pitches the nose up, the aerodynamic forces will create a moment to pitch the nose back down automatically. We want this to be done just from the arrangement of the wing and the tail. We don't want to have to involve any pilot inputs or, or control surface deflections to make that happen. We just want the layout of the aircraft to do, the, to do that by itself. So let's pitch that nose back up and start taking a look at the moments that are generated naturally. With the aircraft nose up like this, we have the lift on the wing which is creating a nose up pitching moment. As you can see here, the lift is acting in front of the CG, and so that's going to generate nose up. Furthermore, when the, uh, when the angle of attack increases, the amount of lift increases. Um, and with the moment arm staying approximately the same, what's going to happen is we're going to get more nose up than we had before. And so that means the, the main wing located in front of the CG like this is a destabilizing force. When you're all trimmed for level flight, everything's fine, and then you nose up a little bit, and when you nose up, you increase the lift, and that increases the amount of nose up. So in other words, nose up causes nose up. So that is unstable and that will go out of control. The tail, on the other hand, the tail is back behind the CG. So when you nose up and the tail creates more lift than it used to, it creates more nose down moment than it used to. So the tail is a stabilizing force. Let's take a look now mathematically at how the total moment is affected by a change in angle of attack. First thing we'll do, we'll pitch the nose up. We'll have greater lift from both the wing and the tail. Here's our lift equations that we, that we had before. Um, and if we multiply those times the moment arms, we get the moment contribution from each. Remembering that the tails is a nose down and so it gets the minus sign. Total moment means we add those together and that's this. So what I'm gonna do next, I'm just gonna factor out, we got some common terms here. Uh, I'm gonna factor those out and I'm gonna stick alpha here on the end because we're trying to describe how does moment change when you change the angle of attack. And this is the equation, uh, a greatly simplified version of the equation that describes what the total moment will do when you change angle of attack. It may look kind of complex, but let's remember that C sub L sub alpha, CL alpha is a constant described by the wing, the, the wing choice, the design of the wing. The, this whole shebang here, these are all constants that we design into the aircraft. We're gonna tweak them as we're trying to adjust the design, but those are fixed forevermore. So this is just a constant. Q, for today's discussions, we're gonna fly at a constant speed at a constant altitude, so we're not gonna vary Q today. That means this all boils down into just a constant. It's just a constant number. So moment equals a constant times alpha. That is a straight line, simply a straight line. Taking a look at this equation as the aircraft designer, what is it that we're trying to achieve? We're trying to achieve a situation where you when you increase the angle of attack, you get a downward, a negative moment generated by that. Now, we aren't gonna get that out of these terms, 
but we do have control of these terms in here. And so if we need a negative output from a positive input, these terms here need to add up to a negative number. So I'll just rearrange that. And that comes out to say the simple statement, all you need is that the wing must be smaller than the tail. Um, and in fact, there is a real situation that that's called a canard. Um, and maybe we'll, maybe we'll talk about that someday, but, uh, this video is going way long. So let's stick with conventional, um, conventional arrangement where the tail is in the back. Um, and, and let's just rearrange it. What we can do to make this thing neutrally stable or, or, or stable, uh, at least slightly is to make sure that the moment arm for the wing is smaller than this quantity here. This is the minimum we'll have to do. We'll have to make sure that this, this wing is pulled very close to the CG. And um, in order to balance that, we can do some things. We can either make the tail bigger or we can make the tail farther away, push the tail farther back to increase stability, uh, make the tail bigger to increase stability, shrink the wing. Uh, no, that's, no, let's don't do that. Um, move the move the wing back closer to the CG, and ultimately that's the one we're going to go with. In practice, the way we do this, the way we ensure that this number is definitely greater than this number, is we're just going to make this number negative. We just take DL and we push it to the opposite side. We just push it to the opposite side of the CG. I'm just going to push the the Make sure this thing is stable. I'm going to push the, the wing behind the CG. And now DL being less than zero, that's definitely less than this quantity. And I'm definitely stable now. So we're finally there, uh, almost there. We figured out how to make the aircraft stable. The trick to make the aircraft stable is to locate the wing behind the CG just a little bit. Uh, and now the wing is a stabilizing influence, just like the tail is. So everything is stable. It's definitely stable now. Now I want to, uh, since I'm doing that, let's put the DL behind the CG. We're going to officially embrace that. Uh, all my previous diagrams showed this, the, the DL in front of the CG. We're not doing that because we know better. We're putting the DL behind the CG. So I'm going to redefine this to be a positive number now when it's behind the CG. I'm going to drop that minus sign and I'm going to bake the minus sign into the moment right here because this moment now, I think we can see, is a nose down pitching moment and that's negative, just like the tails is a nose down pitching moment. Okay, let's sum up the moments now and we'll get that. All we have to do is turn this number into zero and we've got it, which means that we need to wait a minute. Wait a minute. How can we, how can we make a positive number equal to a negative number? Uh, let's see what we can do. Can we turn lift negative? No. Can we turn DL back negative the way it was before? We don't want to because we want stability and that wing provides the lion's share of that by doing this. So how about DT? Can we make DT negative? Well, that's the canard I mentioned before. Uh, no, we're doing a conventional, conventional tail here. Can we make T a negative value? Yes, and there's the answer. Uh, in order to achieve level flight with this stable aircraft, we're going to put uh, the wing behind the CG and we're going to make the tail generate downforce instead of lift. So this is the design that we've settled on where we have the main wing located a little bit behind the CG for stability reasons. And that forced us to generate a little bit of a downforce on the tail. Um, that let me emphasize that means now the wing has to be slightly larger because we need a little extra lift from the wing to compensate for the tail's downforce. The downforce is actually pushing the aircraft down. So we'll need a little extra boost 
um, on the wing to compensate for that. Uh, and now that we've got that and we're certain that this is stable, let's look again at this equation. Um, just now that we've moved the DL, we redefined DL to be positive this way. Let's rewrite this equation of the moment. This is how the moment varies with angle of attack. And uh, it's, we'll see this, we want that to be negative. We want a negative moment when you increase angle of attack. So we want this quantity to be negative. And that means this quantity inside the parentheses, that has to be negative. Um, and we can write that as just that. Um, and then again, putting that in terms of DL. So now we have DL must be greater than this ratio. But hold on just a minute, I'm rolling it back. Some time ago, in, I think in the previous episode at this point, we actually had this equation where we said DL had to be equal to that in order to get level flight. And that's how we kept it from having any moment. So this equation is the one that says we are stable. And this is the equation we had for it being balanced. We want both. And so one of these has got to go, and it's that one. Uh, back when we created that equation, we made some assumptions, and we're going to have to break one of those assumptions now. So here's the equation again for the moment as a function of alpha, and I've graphed it over here with this red line. We can see that since all of this is just a constant, we have this straight line and it has that negative slope that we said uh, created the stability that we wanted. However, the, the intercept here, the, the point where the, the curve crosses, goes right through the origin, goes through alpha equals zero. The, that's the point when there's no moment acting on the aircraft. If you look right here at the equation, it's pretty clear the only time you can get a zero to come out here is when alpha is zero. So the, that means the only time the aircraft can be in level flight is at an angle of attack of zero. And unfortunately at zero angle of attack, we also get zero lift. And so we're not gonna be able to fly like that. What we need is to be nice and level somewhere here with a positive angle of attack and that means we want this green line. We want the negative slope, but we want to cross the axis somewhere over here um, to give us a positive nose up attitude so that we can, we can continue flying like that. So this green line is stable because it's got the negative slope, but uh, it's flyable because it's got this crossing over here in the positive alpha zone. So somehow what we need to do is raise this red line straight up to bring it up to the, the green line. And how are we going to do that? Well, that means tacking on a constant to this equation. Where are we going to get a constant that we can just tack on to this equation? It turns out it's not that difficult. We simply tilt the tail a little bit we're going to tilt the tail a little bit here um, so that the angle of attack of the tail is this, the same angle of attack as the rest of the aircraft plus some offset, some incidence angle. So what that means is we will just, we just mount the tail on the aircraft and we'll just you know, tip it. We'll tip it down a little bit because we want to create a little extra downforce in the back of the aircraft. So that's what we're gonna do there. We're gonna put a little bit of a down tip on it, and then that should give us the extra that we want it. And if you factor that out here, it looks like this. And so this is that B that we're looking for. Um, and uh, if you remember Y equals MX plus B, right? The B part, which is this, is the intercept on the y-axis. So that's right there, that's this point. We can use this graph now to decide exactly how much we need to tip the tail down. So what we'll do is we'll decide for cruising speed, the cruising speed of this aircraft, how much lift do we need? Based on the cruising speed and the lift, we're going to choose 
uh, our angle of attack that we need to be at, at cruise. That'll tell us this point right here. For the stability, we that will tell us what the slope of this line should be. Um, and now that we've got that settled, we can finally choose the use based on this this intercept point we want right here that'll give us this b offset which is this quantity right here and that tells us how much we need to tilt the tail when we're mounting the tail on the aircraft so that's going to just look like this was bring on our aircraft here and so here's our tail with the, we've been drawing it nice and in parallel parallel to the rest of the aircraft all we're going to do now is tilt it down a little bit and i've exaggerated it dramatically here tilt it down a little bit uh, so that that tail now generates the downforce that we need so now that we have a stable aircraft that can cruise in level flight let's summarize how we got here level flight means the lift from the wing plus the lift of the tail has to add to the weight of the aircraft and now we saw that the the lift of the tail could be downforce and we'll need to account for that to hold that pitch steady we need no net moment we need the, the moment to be zero we looked at a graph and we saw how that meant it has to cross the the axis and we can choose where we want it to cross the axis for stability when you increase the angle of attack that must generate a negative pitching moment and when we looked at the graph of the moment versus alpha that means it has to have a negative slope and we'll choose the amount of slope there to decide how stable or how unstable we want our aircraft to be then we saw that for a conventional aircraft with typical stability we will often go ahead and locate the wing behind the cg um, and that will mean that the wing is a stabilizing force itself and we don't have to get too much into worry about uh, whether the tail is big enough to generate that and finally the the big reveal here um, at least it was a big reveal for me is that when you take number two and number four together and combine them that means your tail has to be trimmed to generate downforce when you're cruising along in level flight so that's how you do stability you can arrange the placement and size of the tail and the placement of the main wing with respect to where you put the cg of the aircraft in order to create a situation that is both stable and capable of being trimmed for level flight uh, and at this point I, I guess i should bring it back to what sparked this whole conversation in the first place which is our wonderful flat earth friends who um, have questioned why doesn't the airplane why doesn't the pilot need to tip that nose does the pilot constantly have to shove the stick forward shove the stick forward and i said no you you don't because this is why because we have designed the aircraft to do that all by itself uh, and i want to stress that isn't why we do it we don't do it for that reason um, the the amount of nose down that the pilot would have to do to account for the curvature of the earth is so very tiny that it's vanishingly small anyway no one needs to worry about that in the design of an aircraft the reason we do actually do stability is because we want a stable aircraft what that means is you're flying along everything's good nice and level and you hit an updraft an updraft comes and blows from underneath the aircraft that's going to create an increase in your angle of attack that's going to cause the the angle of attack now because it's the air is not moving level with you anymore now the air is coming from below that means that the air you got some velocity from the motion of the airplane and you got some velocity up you've now got an angle of attack that suddenly has occurred on the aircraft if the aircraft is unstable an increased angle of attack causes the the aircraft to nose up and increase it even further and so that is that is unstable that that means you're just flying along all of a sudden you get a gust and you flip over so don't want that right 
We don't want that. We want the opposite, which is if you get a little gust pushes you up, that the aircraft noses into the gust automatically. Uh, and that's the reason we designed for stability. Uh, and I should, I should mention that in the wide, wide world of aircraft design, um, sometimes we go for uh, an unstable aircraft. My, my personal passion is uh, fighter aircraft. And so in modern fighter aircraft, we'll often have a, an unstable aircraft designed on purpose. And that allows us to be um, much more responsive. Um, the downside of stability is that if your aircraft is too stable, it will resist changes in angle of attack. We want the pilot to be able to change the angle of attack. You know, you, you, you pull the stick, you pull the yoke, and um, you should be able to nose up or nose down the aircraft. If it's too stable, it will fight you and it will be very difficult to control. So um, there's a balance you want to strike. And if you want it extremely agile, one of the tricks we can do with, with modern software is make an unstable aircraft and then use software to compensate for that so that the, we call that a fly-by-wire. So the pilot gives a command to nose up and the plane takes care of that for you. It deflects the control surfaces, but it does so while simulating a stable situation when you're just holding that stick still. And that sort of gives you your cake and eat it too kind of thing where you can have the quick response time of an unstable aircraft, but the flight characteristics of uh, a stable aircraft. So I'm gonna call that the wrap up for that episode. And this is sort of a little uh, post credit scene here where I'm going to go a little further with it. I have had a few requests to actually show a little bit more of the math. Um, let me remind you, this is a crash course. Um, I am deliberately trying to keep things as simplified as possible so that it convey the ideas and give a sense of what the math is like. Um, but some people have wanted to see some more of the details, some of the things that I've been blowing off um, that we don't normally blow off in engineering class. Uh, I think Perhaps some of these requests come from skeptics who don't really believe that I know what I'm talking about. Um, others maybe are really just interested in this material and it's really, it's for you that I'm, that I'm doing it. In particular, there was one person reached out to me who is uh, graduating from high school and going into, looking forward to, to pursuing some uh, college degree and Maybe you're interested in engineering. If you're interested in some engineering, you wanna see what those classes are gonna be like. Let me see if I can pull you up something and we'll take a little look at it. I did a little browsing online and I came across this textbook that you can download and you can follow along with if you wanna see some of the details that I'm gonna use uh, to, to go through really quickly. This is Interactive Aerospace Engineering and Design by David Newman. Um, Deva, uh, David Newman is a professor in aerospace engineering at MIT. So um, this is legit. This is a legit textbook uh, for the undergrad um, level. This uh, looks like an introductory sort of a textbook. So if you're interested in like, what's it gonna look like in my first few semesters uh, of learning this stuff. So let's take a quick glance at the table of contents. Here we go, um, and let me zoom in a little bit. Let's see, what about 150? Uh, okay, so you can see what's gonna be in here uh, and what we're looking for specifically, let's jump to aircraft stability and control, which is what we're talking about today. So page 147, let's take a quick skim through this section and compare it against what I was doing and sort of see a little bit of, of what I cut out. Um, so basic nomenclature, uh, we are doing, we are just confining ourselves to the talk about pitching moment here. Uh, and that's going to be M like I used. Um, uh, cool little diagram of the, the airplane. Um, there's the CG like we talked about. And uh, hey, spoiler alert, huh? Okay. Um, let's get to some good stuff here. Airplane stability. All right, 
there are two basic types of stability. What? I didn't say that. Static stability and dynamic stability. We have only been talking about static stability, and you'll see the diagram. Hello. You see the diagram uh, similar to the one that I showed about what static stability means. She's going to go on to talk a little bit about dynamic stability. Um, I haven't mentioned that. There was one comment on it, though, that um, I, I had said that the aircraft will follow along at its line of constant pressure. And some commenter uh, correctly pointed out that it could actually oscillate around that line. Um, and that's what this diagram is showing. Um, and we haven't, we haven't gone into that. Um, ah, here we go. Static. We want static. Uh, and yeah, it results from moment on the wing. She's going to break down the, the aerodynamic pressures on the wing. Um, here we go. I can find myself to moment, um, but aircraft engineers really, really love unitless coefficients. So, you know, we talked about C sub L. CL is a unitless, unitless coefficient, um, and they just like unitless for everything. And so the unitless coefficient for moment is C sub M. Uh, and Here's how you deunitize, you, you remove the units from a moment, is you put the dynamic pressure in there and an area. So that's the same reference area that we've been using. And then you need an extra unit of length because uh, moment is in Newton meters or pound feet. So you have an extra unit of distance that you have to pull out somehow. And so we do it by, by dividing by the cord length. C is the cord length of the, uh, of the wing. Probably the, the mean aerodynamic cord, which she'll talk about in a bit. Okay, um, symmetrical airfoils. Yes, I, I, we had, when we did it, we had strictly symmetrical airfoils. She's going to mention that probably in the modern day, you're more than likely not going to have a symmetrical airfoil. Um, and that's going to introduce an extra moment that we did not have. Um, so that's listed here. What else? Um, the moment about the CG is going to be indicated here as the moment comma CG, which is slightly different from the moment about the aerodynamic cord. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I think she's going to get to that at some point. Okay, um, all right, how to attain static longitudinal stability and pitch stability. That's the, what we've been talking about. Okay, blah, 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 blah. Ah, here's this, here's this graph, very similar to the graph that I showed. Um, the only difference is, uh, is that she's put it in terms of the coefficient instead of just the, the moment. Neither here nor there, it's, it's the same. Um, also, she's going ahead and showing the partial derivative there. Um, that just means slope, right? So if you're, if you're math savvy, that's how you write slope. It's no problem. The rest of us can just write the word slope and be happy with it. So uh, what do we see from this diagram? And in fact, I think it's in here. Um, in order to trim, to trim the aircraft, and I haven't officially defined the word trim, but here we have it. Um, trim is when the moments go to zero, and that's when it, the moment here is on this side. When the moment hits zero, that's when it crosses this line. And so this is the angle where you're trimmed. That's the alpha, the angle of attack where you're trimmed. And so we want, uh, for our aircraft design, we want a negative slope and a positive trim alpha. All right. Uh, okay, and that's expressed mathematically. So she wrote this mathematically here. Um, po a, a negative slope and a positive trim angle. Okay, uh, and then here's what it looks like for an unstable aircraft. Who wants that? All right. Okay, what is this yellow? Um, positive, uh, positive camber uh, means it's not, um, the airfoils don't necessarily have to be symmetrical. And that would mean, usually a lot of times you'll see a, an airfoil that is curved over the top uh, and maybe even kind of sort of swoopy. 
Um, <clears throat> that means that when you just put it straight in the wind tunnel, it will generate lift. And it'll also, more than likely, in fact, she says 100%, will generate some moment all by itself. So the wind, the, the, the wing, the airfoil itself will generate a moment, and that's an extra contribution we'll have to put into the calculation. Okay, uh, downwash. I mentioned it, but we're not going to do it. Of course, she is going to do it. Here's the diagram. Here's her. I, I love it. And here she's, this is, consider the idealized wing tail configuration. So this is her idea of what an idealized or simplified wing tail configuration would look like. And I think you'll agree it's a little bit more complicated than what we had. Um, let's take a quick look at some of the terms that we didn't talk about. Uh, one thing I guess I never really covered is that um, lift, lift is here, it is defined as perpendicular to the direction of the flow. Uh, so we always had our lift pointed straight up. To simplify the diagrams, we always have the flow coming from the side. Um, uh, drag is parallel to the flow. So we didn't even cover drag yet. Uh, okay, here's your alpha. Alpha we've got, we got an alpha of the wing and eventually we had an alpha of the tail, which we allowed to be different from the alpha of the, of the wing. Um, we didn't talk about the incidence angle of the wing. We did put an incidence angle on the tail though. Here's the incidence angle on the tail. Um, meaning you don't have to have the wing parallel to you know the fuselage you can have the wing tilted up as she's shown here in an exaggerated way uh, and then the tail can be at a different angle so she's drawn the cambered also she's drawn the cambered airfoils here so we have the incidence angle that we didn't talk about uh, the fact that the lift is perpendicular to the flow that we didn't talk about um, and then how about this one what is this little epsilon symbol that says downwash uh, that'll be talked about in a bit. Um, what else? Oh, okay. Uh, the distances that, that she has defined are distances from this little point here, which she says is the aerodynamic center. We didn't talk about the, the aerodynamic center. The aerodynamic center is the place where the wing itself is neutrally stable. Um, in terms of, yeah, that's good enough. It, it doesn't, it's the point of the wing where pitching up doesn't create additional moment right on the wing itself. It will create additional lift. And being off the CG by this moment arm right here, that will create the, the moment. Um, okay, so that's the diagram. Okay, talking about downwash now. Uh, we've got an estimate for the downwash right in here. Uh, somewhere between 0.3 and 0.5, we will multiply uh, times the, the, the alpha of the wing to get the, the alpha of the tail. Okay, and expressing that with the downwash and the incidence angles so we have the overall alpha of the tail. Uh, that's not not complicated. Um, anything to say about the downwash? Nothing. I, no linky there. Um, downwash just means that the the wing is generating lift, so the the air is pushing the wing up, and that means the wing is pushing the air down. Without getting into the aerodynamics of the flow, um, that just we can expect the air to be shoved down by the wing. And so if the air is going down when it hits the tail, boink, going air going down when it hits the tail, that's like having a negative angle of attack. It's kind of going to push the tail down a little bit. Uh, and so that's this term we're going to include here. Okay. And so then she's she has written, we put CL alpha here. Um, she's just written A, the letter A. Uh, and I didn't see, must have been in one of the earlier chapters where she defined what that was, but that's going to be essentially CO alpha there. And recognizing there are different airfoil characteristics 
on the two, on the, on the wing and the tail. So it's a little bit more complicated. Adding it all up and multiplying everything out. And this is, this is the equation she's got then. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, we, we <laughs> oh, wow. Um, that's not that bad. And it's just a little bit more complex than what we had. What else should I note? Um, she's put A, A here for where I had S. Um, I, I did notice earlier she was using S and she switched to A now, um, but that's okay. A, it stands for area either way. So um, A is a better letter, but I, I think S maybe was from surface. Uh, I don't know. So traditionally we use, we use S or sometimes we use A. They're, they're both fine. That's the same thing. So that is the, the area of the tail. And then down here underneath is the area of the wing. And so you'll recognize this section right here. That is the area of the tail times the moment arm of the tail divided by the area of the wing, right? And so that's that same ratio we kept seeing. It keeps popping up. Um, and it was even in our very simplified version. All right, what are we going to do with this? Um, <clears throat> right, so she's talking about right here, the first term is the sensitivity to the angle of attack, meaning when you adjust the, the alpha, this is what happens, and this part here, and then that makes this part the constant part. And so um, the, the incidence angle of the tail is going to be prominent in that part. And so that's where our, in our simplification, we dropped a whole lot of these terms, um, but we did still have that incidence angle ultimately was pretty key. Okay, um, same rules from before. We want a stable aircraft. Um, and so from this stable aircraft, that means this part is uh, is going to be negative. And she's expressing this using a little just basic calculus, just saying, I want the slope of the line. So the slope of this line, if this is y equals mx plus b, then m is the slope. And so that she wants to be negative. Uh, and so a little bit of simplification here, ultimately, what we're talking about is, is what is this XA going to be? And we need it to be less than this quantity. That's, that's the DL, right? And this is, in my form, this is essentially DL had to be less than that ratio. And then all these other terms that we kind of blew off, right? Okay. Um, whoops. What else? Uh, yeah. And then also the note down here. For lift generation, we need these things, and therefore the lift on the tail may have to be negative. It isn't 100% has to be, but um, uh, it's pretty common. It's pretty common. Okay. Um, oh, and yeah, here's the here's the equation for the angle of attack on the wing when the aircraft is trimmed. Uh, enjoy that one. Yeah, and then we're into example. Uh, she'll run the example, and are there any exercises in here? Let's take a look. So here's an example where we, we start with um, an aircraft design. So here's the area of the wing, 15 square meters, and the cord length, and the area of the tail, and the placement of the tail, uh, the mass of the aircraft, the... Ah, <laughs> Inertial rotation. We don't. We won't need that for this. I don't think. Um, yeah. The uh, yeah. Uh, the lift characteristics of the wing and tail, and yeah, the um, the the basic moment that we ignored. The um, the downwash that we also had ignored, and then it's um, being trimmed for 50 meters per second at approximately 1,500 meters. So we calculate the neutral point. Um, the neutral point is the CG location uh, where 
she going to get to that? Yeah. <laughs> the CG location where the aircraft is neutrally stable. Okay, and there you go. There's that. Uh, question two, suppose that the CG is placed halfway between the AC, that's basically the wing, that's where we're putting the lift, and that neutral point that you just calculated. What it, that is, this and this. What is the angle of attack of the tail and the lift produced by the tail? And then she grinds it all out and then says the tail angle of attack is negative 1.9 degrees, so it is tipped down by about a degree. And in here, the lift generated from the tail in this example came out to be negative 374 newtons. That's my look at interactive aerospace engineering and design, uh, which is a, an actual textbook uh, for an undergraduate course written by David Newman, who is a professor at MIT. So uh, that's what that really looks like. Um, and, but I will be, I, I'm planning to keep my videos down to the, just the, the very overview kind of stuff where we're just doing, getting the gist of it um, to try to make it more YouTube friendly. Um, and this video is already 40 minutes long. There's so much more to say, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and cut it off here. Uh, I, I want to do a plug for Walter Bisland's simulator on this. It's really amazing and fantastic. You can play with that. Go, go play with that uh, and, and get a sense for, for how all of this stuff is working. Maybe I'll have time to feature that in a video at some point. And also uh, a plug for FV Peer Review, who did a video on how the angle of attack is the pilot's point of view of, of dipping the nose. Um, many comments, many commenters have come over here um, directed from some, some stuff they, they saw uh, on someone else's video. Uh, and no, I'm not going to do any responses to that. But um, you're welcome. Come on over here and comment in a civil and respectful manner. Always looking forward to that. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll be doing more videos about some of you asked for science. Where's the science? This is an engineering video. Don't worry, we'll be, we'll be getting back to science at some point. Definitely we'll be getting back to critical thinking. Quite a few uh, of my new visitors ha seem to have the idea that, that uh, critical thinking means something very different from what I think that means. So um, uh, we'll come back to that at some point too. Let me know down in the comments, respectfully please, what would you like to hear about next? Do you want to hear about drag, thrust? Do you want to talk about um, uh, something else? Uh, a lot of requests for gyroscopes and altimeters. Um, maybe we'll talk about that. Uh, let me know down there what it is that you want to learn next and we can dig into that. Um, and uh, I'll see you out there.